name is Theron Protzi. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. We're here today to honor the true legend and hero, Gene Cernan, the last man to step foot on the moon. Um, it's so sad to lose two great heroes in such a short period of time. I remember reflecting back, I, got, I went to go see his screening here um, in Orlando of uh, Last Man on the Moon, and I was so excited for the first time I was actually going to get to see Gene Cernan. And uh, of course, he felt ill at that time and he couldn't make it. And uh, it's sad the next time that uh, I'm talking about Gene Cernan, it's after his passing. But uh, he will be forever remembered. Uh, I remember every day when I go to Saturn V and I hear him say, tell every teacher, to, he's instructing every child to tell every teacher to go in the classroom and scratch impossible out of the dictionary. It doesn't exist. That's the kind of man he is and was as far as, you know, true believing that anything can be accomplished. But there is no better person to talk about another hero such like this, yet another astronaut. And we have a couple today that are true American heroes within themselves. But Senate Director, Mr. Bach, the man I'd like to introduce to say a few words about Gene Cernan. Matt? Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks, Theron. You know, uh, I appreciate you all coming out today to honor a true hero. You know, Gene was a, a Navy captain. Uh, he flew one of my favorite airplanes in the Navy, the A-4 Skyhawk. Uh, test pilot astronaut. He flew his first flight in uh, on Gemini 9. His capsule's right in there. And if you take time to watch that story, he did America's second spacewalk. And pretty harrowing. But uh, he and Tom Stafford learned a lot on that flight. And then uh, Gene flew again with Tom, going to the moon on Apollo 10 in 1969. Uh, another amazing flight. And then he had the privilege of commanding the very last Apollo mission and being the last man at this time to set foot on the moon in 1972. But I don't believe that Gene is going to be the last man on the moon. And one of the things that he was extremely passionate about was our exploring beyond our home planet and uh, developing that capability that would allow us to go back to the moon and go beyond. And uh, I just, I, I feel badly that he didn't, he wasn't able to stay alive long enough to actually see it come to fruition. But uh, in talking with him, having him down here, there was nobody that was more supportive of what we were doing. And, uh, you know, I think that's, that's his legacy. It's one of, of exploration, of taking the word impossible out of the dictionary. Anything's possible when we put our minds to it and we work together to make it happen. And, uh, that, that's what I remember about Gino. It was his uh, unbridled, his enthusiasm, his drive for what we were doing, his passion for space exploration and making us better than who we are. And uh, he is an advocate for the space program and a hero that is uh, going to be greatly missed. It's my privilege now to introduce another hero in my mind, uh, one of the first group of shuttle astronauts in 1978, and uh, also a good friend of uh, Gene Cernan's, uh, John McBride. John? Thanks, Bob. It is a, a sad day for all of us. Uh, unfortunately, they're becoming more and more off. If you take a look at it, our original 30 guys came to three classes, I think. We're down to about half of that. Uh, each and every one of them are I know we could go the word hero, but I'll guarantee you, Bob, myself, and all those guys don't consider themselves hero. They consider themselves lucky like we are to have gotten to go do what we got to do and when we got to do it. And I was certainly honored to have known Gene Cernan essentially since I joined the ranks of NASA in 1978. Part of our two-year training project was to have all the astronauts of Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo guys come to our class and talk to us about their missions and enhance our capability to go up and do our follow-up missions. Got to meet Gene that first, probably 1978 or 79, when he came through with uh, Tom Stafford to talk to us about their uh, Gemini mission. So it's been a real pleasure for me to join that first class and essentially got to meet every astronaut who came before me, except for the three we lost in the Apollo 1 fire. And being in the first class of show people, I've got to meet all the astronauts since and having served as three years of presidents of all the astronauts and cosmonauts I do know pretty much everybody that's going into space for my career. How much more can I get from a little coal mining town in West Virginia advocate or talk about it. Be lucky. Gene uh, was one of the foremost advocates of 
nurturing and encouraging our young people to follow in his footsteps, in our footsteps. He certainly was a, an idol to me as a young child when I was growing up. I, I grew up in the space program. In my last year of high school when we announced the Mercury 7, in college when we did the historic Germany and in the Navy when we did the Apollo 11 landing, so I followed all this stuff very closely, so it was really a wonderful opportunity for me, coming from the Navy like a lot of them had done, to come down here and do the things that they got to do. So we're down to about half of them. But the good part is that we still have half of them, and all those guys that flew into space, the first group of 30, were remarkable people. They did remarkable things. As a matter of fact, I got to go to Russia my first time with Gene Cernan back in the early 90s, a trip I'll never forget. He came to my uh, ceremony at the Air and Space Museum when, when my colleague gave me an honorary doctorate. He was there to witness that. So he has been a dear friend for many, many years. He'll be greatly missed. Uh, Bob kind of alluded to it that he, he, got, he doesn't want people to call him the last man to walk on the moon. He always wanted to be called the most recent man to walk on the moon. Because he firmly believed in and he championed and advocated that he thought, I've heard him say, I've introduced him a couple times here at Kennedy, as a matter of fact, I've heard him say that he thought, after his flight in 1972, that we would perhaps be on the moon, or back to, on the moon, or on the Mars by 1980 or 1990. <laughs> and I've heard him say in 1990, that's past, maybe we can do it in the next 10 years. It hasn't happened yet, but I know he would love to have seen it. He'll be watching it from a better place. So we just hope we get to it and get back to the moon here soon and on the Mars in the next few years. Before my end, end of my term here on Earth, so uh, I wish more of that. I had the opportunity back in August. We were going to go over and spend a day with Gene and interview him for a presentation in this facility. I got over there Thursday night. We were going to meet Friday morning. He called me Thursday night. Said I just I can't do it, John. I just don't feel like it. So he never really came out of that uh, state of state of a physical handicap. Uh, so we lost him. But he was a true gentleman, uh, a true American. Idol, he was an idol for me, and he's an idol for many, many millions. God bless.